What's a secret you'll take to your grave but you'll share with Reddit because you need to get it off your chest? One time in high school I stole this giant turtle statue from a random yard and put it in my grandma's as a joke. It was around the time the gnome was traveling the world. Well turned out that the old lady was my grandma's frenemy and when she came over and saw her stolen turtle she wanted answers well my grandma's answer if it just showed up did not satisfy her and they got into a huge fight about it. The other old lady died a few years ago. I feel bad I never told her that my grandma didn't steal the turtle. I did. You should put that turtle on the frenemy's grave. For closure. I once straight up left my car in a parking lot outside the university fully unlocked and running for like five hours while I took some classes. But this is sandwiched between two suicide comments like a nice little palate cleanser. I was in a FWB kind of situation with a someone I didn't know super well a few months back, and she got off to the fact that a younger guy was into an older woman. I was 24 at the time and she was 40, and I mean, so was I, I love MILFs and she was right up my alley. But one day she stops talking to me out of nowhere and I find out that it's because she went to jail. Previously, she had told me she used to have a minor D problem, which I was sympathetic towards because my mom did too, so I knew she was meeting with lawyers or parole people or whoever, and I was surprised she had relapsed because she seemed to be doing so well. Nope, turns out she had RPD her 14-year-old son, and was just in my area awaiting trial or something, and she was so into our age difference because she was a pedophile and was using me as a kind of substitute. I was shocked and disgusted when I found out, but it made some of the things she said when we had sex make more sense. I had no idea and probably should have talked about it with someone but I just felt like trying to forget it would work, and for the most part it has, but I'll still never tell anyone I know personally. I used to take poos in my backyard as a kid and let my stepdad find them. One day he called me out there is no way in hell this was a goddamn stray cat. Played it cool as a cucumber. My dad committed suicide a few days before my birthday in October. The last conversation I had with him was about how I thought his pooty ex cheated on him. My mental health isn't the greatest so I've convinced myself over the last 7 months that it's my fault. I regret that that was the last conversation we had. Over his dumb effing ex. There was no suicide note or anything. I miss him every second of every day and I stare at his urn just sitting there. It's effing weird man. I was the one who put the Ernest Goes to Camp VHS in the VHS player. I was the reason the tape got eaten. I'm too late for this to be likely seen, but I'll type it out as therapy for myself. The last time I spoke with my mother, I didn't really speak at all. I was 13 years old and had been spending the years at the hospital as she did chemotherapy, radiation, laser surgery, etc. to fight her spreading lymphoma. I was a stupid kid and was frustrated with having to be at the hospital every day after school. We were in the hospital room, and I was annoyed that I couldn't be at home in my room calling my friends, no cell phones yet, or whatever the hell I was concerned with. When we were eventually leaving that day, I was a giant asshole and wouldn't give her a hug and just said something like, I just wanna go home. The next day she was in a coma and never recovered from it. And the last time I got to hug her, her body was cold and was no longer alive. That will haunt me until the day I die. Edit. I don't know what to say. I kinda forgot I posted this and normally don't have many notifications, so I was confused at first. I did not expect to be crying when I got back on Reddit today. Everyone who took their time to write such kind things, thank you so much. I almost feel a little weird having this up and being seen by thousands of people clearly, since I thought it would just be a usual ignored ask Reddit comment. But I am going to leave it up because the responses I got actually had a pretty profound impact on my day, and my thoughts. And I hope hopefully this comment and the replies can help someone who might be dealing with similar feelings. I had planned on killing my dad with my meds if he was still alive. He wanted to go, we said goodbye but he had enough of feeling ill. But we believe he was overdosed on morphine by the nurses. I didn't know a death rattle could go on so long. But if he was hanging on the next day I would have given help. We spoke about it a couple of times, I promised him he wouldn't go gasping for air, edit, he went peacefully in his own terms. But I told him if he was too tired to carry on that I would help him. Your comments are I formative and heartbreaking. Thank you both for the awards sparkling heart. I promise if his passing was eased by morphine, he was not gasping for air. 
Morphine makes your brain think you don't even need oxygen, so he was in no distress. The rattle sounds really weird, but it isn't uncomfortable. I'm sorry you had to go through this process. Everyone thinks I'm just AF up in the head D addict. What they don't know is between 11 to 14 my drunk evil stepmom would take me to her favorite bar and pimp me out because it amused her. It destroyed my mind so I started using DG not to get high but to try to forget. I was 50 years old before I told anybody. By then my family had given up on me, my wife left me and my son hasn't talked to me in over 10 years. That secret was going to die with me but for some reason I told one friend what happened to me and she helped me realize it wasn't my fault or that I'm just AF up. Today 12 years later she is still the best friend I've ever had and I haven't touched cocaine since 2008 even though it cost me everything important to me. Not really a bad secret, but a friend of mine in college was strapped for cash for groceries one month. There were three of them in the core friend group, and I was just his best friend's girlfriend. I wasn't really wealthy either, but I had some extra money to spare from working an IT job at school, so I withdrew $200, left it in an envelope in his house with his name on it, and let him discover it. To this day he still thinks it was his buddy, Andrew. I never saw fit to correct him. It's only money, and he needed to eat. My first day as a nanny looking after a baby girl. I take her to the park and I'm taking videos of her and getting her to walk to me. She walks three steps to me and then falls on her butt and cries. It occurs to me that I don't actually know if she has walked with her parents yet, she isn't sure of foot yet. Speaking to her mum later on she tells me she is super close but hasn't walked yet. I figure she must have walked with me because she was feeling clingy without her mum. I never told her parents she walked with me and it was about three weeks later she finally walked for her parents. This is a good secret. Nothing to regret or be guilty of. Not as dark as the most in here. Dot but as a teen I had a really bad relationship with my dad. Dot and one day I was really pissed and signed his email up in any freaking newsletter I could find online. He still gets spam mails and doesn't know why. We get along great now. The amount of empty liquor bottles I found hidden around the house after my husband passed away. I knew that he liked to drink, sometimes a little too much, and it was something we bickered about occasionally, but I didn't appreciate the full scope of how much exactly he was drinking. Maybe two to three years before his death he started working from home full time and I'm guessing being home alone all day was when he started going off the rails. Absolutely nothing to do with the circumstances surrounding his death and I wouldn't want to tarnish his memory to family or friends, so I keep it to myself but I don't mind sharing it with strangers. Like 15 years ago, a neighbor behind me was going up the alley putting liquor bottles in other people's recycling bin. His mom was a horrible alcoholic and would drink about 20 bottles of random cheap vodka and things every week. When I caught my neighbor putting stuff in my bin, these bins were about 15 gallons so not huge at all. He told me he was sorry and didn't want everyone to know about his mom's problem. I told him he could just dump all that crap in mine as I didn't care what neighbors thought but don't fill it to the point I couldn't put my stuff in there. I know his mom passed away a few years after that and he sold the place after it was empty for a couple of years. My ex-girlfriend's family told me to break up with her because of her erratic behavior, I will never ever let her know this. My ex-boyfriend's mom, when I called to tell her he had dumped me out of the blue and that I was afraid he was manic and alone, told me, it is very strange to say this because he is my son, but you deserve better. I failed my driver's license test, due to someone else running a stop sign. I walked into the DMV anyways and the lady did not check my paper saying it was a fail and gave me my license anyways. How does someone else running a stop sign make you fail? Because apparently I did not react fast enough, and to be honest I was stressed already due to the test. No accident just marked cause of the late reaction. I masturbated in a school hallway and my teacher caught me. I was 10 at the time. No one ever said a thing. Edit, holy poo I never got this many upvotes in my life. Thanks. I masturbated around the corner from my entire class during an exam when I was about 12. I never got caught. But I remember not being able to look any of them in the face afterwards. It was me, I peed on the carpet, it wasn't the dog. 
In seventh grade one was invited to a popular girl's birthday party and I took a massive poo in her bathroom and clogged the toilet. I panicked so I just walked out of there like nothing happened. Then when one of the other kids needed to use the bathroom, they came out and screamed out to everyone that someone left a massive log in the toilet and it wouldn't flush. Suddenly the entire birthday party shifted to the bathroom so they could inspect the giant poo I left in there and everyone was laughing. I played along and laughed too, maybe a little too hard because I thought it was absolutely hilarious everyone was staring at my poo and had no idea. I specifically remember one of the kids going, well obviously it wasn't one of us, how would that even be able to come out of a kid, skull anyway everyone eventually decided it was her stepdad who did it. I will never not laugh at the fact that everyone thought a 12-year-old girl poo belonged to a middle-aged man because it was so nasty. The girl whose house it was at ended up becoming a major bully in high school so I felt even more satisfied walking past her knowing they had to clean my poo once upon a time, relieved face heart. UDIDNT have a poop knife. I lit a firework in a public park and panicked so I flushed it down the toilet. Boom. No more toilet. Whoops, I was 12. I'm so sorry I laughed at, no more toilet. I'm glad the toilet perished and not you. Guy at an event I was working got physical, but didn't actually do any damage, though not for lack of trying. It was clear he was trying to actually hurt me, and this was after Asterisk he'd made a scene in front of a bunch of kids, harassed some other presenters, and in general been a complete DK. He was an absolutely arrogant F-stick. I told our on-site lawyers he sprained my wrist. Sat through eight hours in the ER waiting to get a little sling and advice to buy some OTC topical pain cream just to make sure he never set foot in one of our events again. I do not regret it. The first and only time I stole something in my M8 life was from my neighbor who was having a yard sale to take his kids to Disneyland. He had a DS game of backyard baseball and I had the money for it, it was $5 and I wanted it. I went up with the money and he told me that he was going to give it to the landlord's kid who was my age too. I was so mad and annoyed that he was going to get the game for free. A few hours later I went back outside and I saw he wasn't there. I walked up to the stand and I saw the game was still there so I took it. I also grabbed a bag of golf balls he had for $10 and a few more games that were marked $1 each so he wouldn't think it was me. I then ran into my apartment and the guilt was eating me up. 30 minutes later he knocked and asked if I took the games because he knew I wanted one. I told him no that I was inside the whole time. I never played any of those games I felt so damn bad I couldn't put in my DS. I even wanted to take them back but I knew I would get caught. They did end up going to that trip, and the landlord kid was mad he didn't get his game, I didn't like him so I was fine with it. I still have that guilt and I remember the prices of everything in the stand. Edit. To clarify I'm 23 now. Back when I was a wee lad on this game known as RuneScape there was a scam where you offered a service a player couldn't do so they would trade you their items. Some guy gave me the best armor in the game and when he realized I wasn't going to give it back he said, er give it back it took so long to get. That was the day I realized I'm not a scammer, gave it back so fast I got friction burn. My mum and stepdad were D-dealers and sometimes they would sell me as an extra service to clients when I was young. The only person I've ever told was the person I believe to be my soulmate. It's embarrassing for me and makes me feel ashamed of myself because of how many times I've been sexually assaulted but he accepted me and that's something I'm thankful for but I will never personally tell anyone else besides him. I cheated on some math homework in college, copying another person's work saved on the computer in the computer lab. He found out and didn't turn me in. I owe him one and wish I could repay him to this day. I still feel weird about it all 25 years later. I downloaded someone else's code and turned it in as coursework. It was so good that the tutor was suspicious and asked me to provide some development notes and comments. I panicked, emailed the person whose program it was and explained. He sent me several previous versions with bugs so I could show, my progress, fully commented code, and even some hand sketches of the interface. He signed it all off with, fake it till you make it bro. I got a near perfect score for that piece of work. As a kid I was forced to go to a Catholic confession. I had nothing to confess and made up a lie to confess about. I didnt take a year off of school to get in state tuition, I got kicked out because my grades were poo. But I'm in grad school now working on a doctorate. Edit, I did end up getting in state tuition, too, so not totally a lie. 
I was molested as a child, teen. By a sister. Then later by a teacher. Procrastination has taken over my life. I have been taking an online course since 2017. Sometimes I start off on a good note and do my coursework but for the most part, I've been failing each and every single time. I have failed this term also. I might get lucky and get financial aid for the next term but I fear I will do the same bullpoo again. What is wrong with me? A year ago my partner of 8 years left me out of the blue, 2 months before our wedding. People tell me how, strong, I am and how well I'm doing. Compliment my work ethic, I work 60 plus hours a week between two jobs, and tell me how, admirable, my coping skills are. When people ask I'm quite firm in saying how much better off I am without him and how happy I am. Truth is, I think of him every minute of every day, I work so much to avoid being alone in our house, I still love him, I cry myself to sleep at least twice a week, I think about suicide a lot and truly I don't think I'll ever love anyone like I love him. He was truly my best friend. We bought a dog a few months before he left me. I don't know where I'd be if she didn't come into my life. Sorry for the downer post but that felt cathartic to put into words. I'ma tell you some things that you may not want to hear, but they're things that have helped me. You're 100% correct. You will never love anyone else like you love him. Each love is as unique as the people involved, and that means there will never be another like it. But that's okay, because that doesn't mean that that one is the best of all time. It's just that the next one will be different. It could very well be better. I know that's been the case for me. Time heals all wounds. The mother effer of it is that it takes time. Grieving is an open wound. It's raw and bleeding, and the pain is bright and sharp. You're going to need to finish your grieving before you can start to heal. My family has a really long and traceable history, because my uncle went through the effort to track it down back to the mid-1600s really neat stuff. While going through some records from the German Federal Archives he found his grandfather's birth certificate and a handful of other documents. He never heard much about him, so he delved into these documents. He saw some funky titles before the names on some of these documents, stuff, staff, and delved deeper. Long story short, my great-grandfather was a Nazi SS officer in the Russia, SS Race and Settlement Office, and was a dedicated Nazi, who was also attached in part to the Waffen SS in 1943-45 as a medic, and present at a massacre in Belgium. What good fun, s. Seriously though, it was a weird ass discovery. Edit. Maybe, weird, doesn't quite cut it, but yeah. Pretty much anyone with German ancestry has Nazis in their family tree. I do too, just the way it is. I think you're good as long as you don't follow their ideals. I thought I was dying the other day. It might have been a heart attack. I had been neglecting my house. My dishes were beyond disgusting. There was clutter everywhere. Not trying to throw a pity party but my fiancé broke up with me recently and I went through a pretty painful physical situation and was just a lazy depressed sack of poo. It occurred to me while I considered calling an ambulance that if I died, someone would have to clean this up. They would associate my death with this disgusting stuff. Obviously if I did die, someone's gotta come do something with my stuff. But to add filthy dishes and clutter in, too? That's not something I want to have anyone connect with me. It feels rude. I live alone and I am out in the country. I think it would take days before anyone checked. So I cleaned. I hustled and started with the dishes. At one point I could feel my heart. Fighting? Hard to describe, but something was f-ed up so I scrubbed faster to get it done before I died. Really racing the clock finish the dishes before you die, UFR. I figured, if I'm found on the kitchen floor with a broken plate around me and gloves on my hands, at least they'll know I was trying to make it better. Finally finished those and kept going. My heart hurt and I was having trouble breathing and I was really scared. I finished cleaning and was in tears. I wrote out who should get what, the gun safe code, and some goodbye messages, and that I just sensed that I was dying. I had made sure to put the cat out so she wouldn't be trapped inside and have to eat my body to survive. I laid on the kitchen floor so that my rotting body wouldn't ruin the carpet. And I waited. I finally fell asleep, exhausted. I'm gonna go get my heart checked on soon. I'm only 38, never smoked, but who knows. Poo happens. But what I did was stupid. I'm a loved member of my community. I didn't call 911. I just accepted that I might die and my only problem was that my house was disgusting. 
that's f ed up and I'm still trying to figure out why I didn't try to get medical help. Edit. Guys, I've had a panic attack. I'm pretty sure this wasn't a panic attack. All the people telling me it was one might give me enough anxiety to effing give me one though. Ha. Thank you all for the concern. I'm going to go to the doctor when my COVID goes away. Second edit. The cat is fine, since people are commenting here in private messaging me about her? That's weird, guys. She's mostly an outdoor cat and is very happy. She found me when I moved into this country place skinny and messed up emotionally. She's healthy and proud and beautiful now, and we are good buddies. Took a walk the other day and she was ecstatic to stroll with me through wheat fields. Have you ever had an anxiety attack? Those can make you feel like you're dying. I wonder how many people in this thread typed out a massive response, only to delete it all and move on. And hash x200b. Exactly what I just did. As a teacher, I've had my Reddit account found before. It could happen again. I never share things on Reddit haha. -ha. I still don't know how to do math percentages. Edit, thank you to everyone who commented on my post and explained how to do percentages. I really appreciate it, makes me happy that so many people want to help me with math. Can you figure out 10%? If you can it can help you figure out the rest. That's what helped me. Like this. 1% of 42 equals 0.42. 5% of 42 equals 2.1. 10% of 42 equals 4.2. 15% of 42 equals 4.2 plus 2.1 equals 6.3. 20% of 42 equals 4.2 times 2 equals 8.4. Edited so you can read it better. In my 20s I was walking home from a bar and had to poo really really badly so I walked to the side of a path I was walking down and just pooped in the woods. Then pulled up my pants and went home much more at ease. We only have one bathroom. My husband's cancer treatments made him very ill, he was in the bathroom constantly. He was so weak and lost about 80 pounds, he looked like a skeleton. I took a grocery bag to the basement, opened it over a garbage can and pooped there. I'd never tell him or my kids or anyone else because they would feel terrible. It was an indignity that I suffered privately to keep their dignity intact. Husband is cancer-free now, but has lost most of his muscle mass so he's still weak and achy, but back to work and mostly fine. I nearly killed a man. Him and his five friends jumped me outside a bar, something about me being homeless and resting there just rubbed them the wrong way maybe. While I was getting stomped I managed to drag him down to the ground and got my arms around his neck. I squeezed and started yelling for them to back off. They did eventually stop kicking my ass when he went limp. I managed to stagger to my feet with him still locked in my grip, pushed him into them and ran as fast as I could. I spent several days in and out of consciousness not too far from the bar, and several more weeks recovering from the attack. I'm certain he survived but if they hadn't stopped when they did he wouldn't have. When I was 19 I was seriously considering suicide. I had written letters to my family and everything. The day I was going to do it my mom took me on a surprise errand. It was a woman selling chihuahua puppies. My mom had me pick one out to be just my dog. I fell in love with that puppy and knew I couldn't leave her by herself. My mom and that dog saved my life. When I was 26 I got divorced. Should have never been married to that woman but here we are. I was already in a bad mental state but that put me to the edge. I after the first couple weeks where I was kinda shell-shocked, then it really sank in and I was just looking for the best opportunity to do it. She calls me one day and says she's taking my dog to the shelter because of some bullpoo reason. I tell her to f off, I'm coming to get him. I pick him up and get him home, look down at him and know that as long as I have that little fuzzy f, I can't do it. That was seven years ago and he's the reason I'm alive. I don't know how I'm going to handle it when he passes. Can't wait for all these to be read out loud by Microsoft Sam on a TikTok with some Minecraft gameplay behind them. Don't be so pessimistic. It could be subway surfers or a modded GTA map. When I was 15 a guy, who was in the same friend group as my friends, roofied my drink and gave me a speedball because he wanted to f a rocker chick, and thought it would make me less uptight. My other friends got him away from me, but wouldn't take me to the hospital, even after I started showing signs of seizing because they didn't want to get in trouble, instead they left me in the back seat of one of their cars. I almost got RPD, got DGED and could have died but my friends still worried more about themselves. Learning people's true colors isn't the best of experiences. 
It really sucks when you learn that about people you thought you could trust. When I was in my 20s I drank way too much at parties. I went to big house party in a local city with a bunch of friends. Long story short I got blackout drunk and woke up the next morning in the passenger seat of my own car in the parking lot of an abandoned strip mall. There was a bunch of dried blood all over my arm and clothes and even on the car door. It looked like a murder scene. Turns out I was stabbed a bit by a guy at the party and instead of taking me to the hospital my friends dumped me in the middle of nowhere. I drove home, cleaned and patched myself up. I was past the point of needing emergency care and deleted every contact in my phone that was even remotely related to that lifestyle. The fact that any of y'all are able to avoid oversharing is amazing to me. I grew up having sexual relations with an adopted cousin. She was younger by a year or so and she initiated it in the beginning. I wish I hadn't done it now. I wish I had grown up more innocent. The other commenters seem to think they're funny and are having a go at you, but in all honesty man, if you're able to you should consider a therapist at the very least. You probably have some subliminal, subconscious feelings and thoughts messing you up. Don't take whatever response you're receiving here on Reddit as an example of the response you would receive from a professional. Some people here are idiots, or young, or sadistic and enjoy making others feel bad. But yeah man, help yourself by letting somebody else help you, if it's in the cards. Technically to my mum's grave. In my teens I had forgotten my music festival ticket and had to come back home to collect it, by then the MDMA was kicked in and my eyes like saucers. My mum said, Kate asterisk you've gotta slow down on those Red Bulls. Ha 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 yes mum the Red Bulls tears of joy. I didn't fail my first year at university because I got under the required grades. I had manic depression, couldn't physically leave the house in the daytime, and missed all my classes and exams. I'm doing okay now. In college, I had my girlfriend, now wife, over and we got pretty frisky. Started playing with some fruits and veggies. Long story short, a cucumber, in a condom, went on quite a wild journey, but somehow ended up on the counter, sans condom. Hours later, her roommate best friend came home with her boyfriend, my best friend, now married, and, well, stole the cookie and made a salad. Both the homeboy and homegirl complained about a weird smell, texture, probably lube, on it, but ate half. We walked out, saw the cut half of the cucumber, one of us died inside, the other started laughing hysterically. I was dragged outside and sworn to secrecy, but every time he throws even a little shade I won't be like. Yeah, well you ate my wife's ass cucumber, but they just aren't the kind of people who would find it funny. In fact, I'm pretty sure even years later, it would be bad. It's too funny not to share outside of that circle, but internally we have to take this to our grave. I'm pregnant right now, but I can't tell my husband because I usually have miscarriages. I don't want to make him sad because I know how badly he wants a second child. I'm 39 and time is running out. I'm just waiting, trying not to feel anything about it, not excitement, not sadness, just nothing. Husband of wife with multiple miscarriages here, please don't do this to yourself. He loves you. Yes it's a horrible sadness to experience, but it's something you do together and help each other through, and he'll be crushed to find out you didn't trust him enough to help you carry the burden if things go poorly. Trucks I was driving have killed five people. Was no fault of my own the people didn't understand how trucks work. I still see, smell and hear the screams. Being the last one to see them alive and trying to comfort them. It breaks a man to dust and it's common that this happens. 40 to 50 ton road train versus a four-door car never ends well. After my mom died I found her naked pictures that her second husband had taken of her. I destroyed them. People need to take a minute and lock that stuff down today or make a pact with their best friend that if they die unexpectedly that anything in their house they want destroyed will be destroyed pronto. I did not need to see those pictures of my mom. But as her daughter they did not especially bother me, rock on mom, but, my brother would have been devastated, as he thought my mom walked on water. Edit. Corrected a misspelled word. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.